Now that you can hear me, yes, loud and clear. Woohoo! One, two, three, loud and clear. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today, because my goal is to talk really to single moms, but because I actually put out a video about needs versus want, I want to explain that. And if you don't know about this man named Kevin Samuels, um, you should look him up, okay? Kevin Samuels is a man that he helped women um, meet high-value men, you know, rich men. He helped connect them. Uh, he's really an expert in that. And the first time I heard about Kevin Samuels, because of a video of this woman that was with him and she made no sense, and I felt so horrible for her. I felt so bad. I cried in anger because of what the conversation was. But when I listened to the entire conversation, instead of the little snippet that was running all over uh, the internet, I, able to, I was able to understand what was going on. So then I understood what he was trying to say. So from that time, I look at another video and another video and another video and another video. And then I, I, I let's put it this way. I actually like Kevin Samuels now. Okay, I don't agree with everything that he says. I don't agree with most of the things that he says. And I would not be sending any woman to listen to him unless she wants to learn. Because the type of women that I talk to, they are not with that kind of goal from his audience. So we have different audience, but I learn a lot from his audience. So why is it that I had a problem with that? Because Kevin Samuels um, share with women how they have to have this perfect body, how they don't need an education, how um, they need to be like between 15 years old sometimes. The, he encouraged a mom for the, the girl to start dating and all that, which my daughter could not date before she was 18. And so he do all those things then that I am not in agreement with. But if you want to look for a rich man and you want a man to take care of you all your life and all that kind of stuff, go ahead and listen to Kevin Samuels. But a warning to you, just a little warning. When that man abuse you, when that man tell you that you are useless, when that man is finished with you because he has so much money, he can purchase as many women as he wants, just like he have made a purchase of you, then you will be in trouble because you will be a married woman. A married woman without an education, a married woman without a backbone, a married woman without an escape. That's what is going to happen to you. And let, let me tell you, a lot of people believe that just because they're married, they will never be divorced. Nothing is ever going to happen to them. And they look down on single moms because they say, oh, single moms are this. Oh, they, they all, you know, everything is negative. I'm not going to even repeat it because everything is negative. But let me tell you, in Spanish, we have a saying, el que escupe para arriba le cae en la cara. If you spit up in the ear, it fall in your face. And that's what happened to a lot of married women. They spit so high that when it fall, it's a lot of nastiness that fall in their face because you compared yourself to a single mom and think that you are better than a single mom. When in reality, your husband is cheating on you. Your husband is bossing you around. Your husband doesn't make you breed. Your husband have you on a leech. Leech? Leech? Whatever, like a dog, right? And I'm not saying that for all of them because I am a married woman now, okay? This is my second time. But I am saying that because you came in to the relationship without bringing anything valuable, only the spreading your legs and spreading babies, and you think that that's all you can bring to the table, that is exactly what the man is paying for. He's paying for you to spread your legs and have babies, and that's all he is going to give you. He's going to pay for that. So now you cannot say, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I, can't, I don't feel like cooking today. I don't feel like doing that because he owns you. Nobody owns me. I owns me. My husband owns himself. We share each other. 
And that's what I'm trying to make clear. This is not about bashing single moms or bashing married women or bashing Kevin Samuels. It's to open your eyes and help you to understand that if you do not have an education or do not build your business or do not have a, you know, for some countries it will be a job. Well, this country called the United States, it will be a career. If you don't have those things, you will be in trouble. Okay? Especially if you are a single mom that you don't have an education. If you don't have a good job, you are going to be desperate. You are going to be needy. You're going to be like, I need a man to take care of my kids. I need a man to take care of my bills. And you're going to start hoeing around because that's all that is left. You have nothing else to give. So you're just going to spread your little mariposa. They, you know, like we call it in Spanish, the little, little uh, butterfly, and you are going to start giving it up because you want to buy milk, you want to buy the fancy dress, you want the house, you want all of that. And I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. This is how you're going to teach your kids to do things like that. No, you have to make sure that before you date, before you get into a relationship as a single mom, you have to make sure you are taking care of your business. You are taking care of your kids. And if you never got an education before, start a business. Take care of your job. Pay your bills. That's what you need to do because a man wants to know that you want him. He wants to know that he wants you. He don't want to come into a relationship with you. That's why you see all over the internet it says, you know, dumb single moms. Just use them and lose them. Or they have all kind of nasty comments about single moms, about, you know, spill milk, about, you know, all you have to do, um, those are disposables. They have so many nasty stuff that just uh, eat my inside when I hear it because it is disrespectful. But it is so disrespectful because some of you are allowing it to happen. Some of you are actually doing that. And that's the reason why you are building a bad name for other single moms that don't deserve it. Other single moms that are working hard. Other single moms that are paying their bills and taking care of their business and respecting themselves. And I'm encouraging you to start respecting yourself. Take care of your self-esteem. Take care of who you are. Make sure that your kids respect you so that men can respect you. Because how can you welcome a man into your world if your children is not respecting you? Now you want to welcome a man into your life because, oh, my children need a man in the house. Your children need for you to, res for, for you to make sure that they respect you. Your children need to make sure that you are being respected. You need to make sure you're... Let me repeat that again. I'm getting too excited here. You need to make sure that your children are respecting you. You need to make sure that you don't just be raising your children. I'm like, oh, you are the man of the house. I made that mistake. My kid, the first time I was a single mom that I got married to my ex-husband, my son before that, he was the man of the house. How can he be man of the house if he's not screwing me? He's not paying the bills. He's not doing all that. How can he be the man of the house? How? How is that possible? Some of you, it seems like you are dating your, your, your children. This is not acceptable. He cannot be the man of the house. You are the authority in your house. And when you meet a man, when that man come into your life, you share that authority in your house. But you cannot be telling your kids that they are the man of the house, because when the other special guy come, your child is going to feel left out. And now you want to protect your child because you don't want the, the husband that you have now to boss your kid around. I did that with my ex-husband. It was not right for my son and it was not right for my ex-husband. It was not right. My ex-husband was a good man, insecure, but he was a good man. Okay. And the reality is, is that I always had to fight to make sure that I protected my son and all of that. Okay. Because I wanted my son not to feel left out, but that would not have happened if I had had my son understand that I was the authority. And when my husband came, we was going to share that authority when he had earned it. 
Now that you just come in and you are in a relationship with a woman and you think that now you are the daddy. Who tell you that they wanted a daddy? Who told you that I am dating because I want you as a daddy? They have a daddy. Even if he's not present, they have a dad. That is the reality. My son have a dad. Maybe invisible, but he still had a dad. So nobody's asking you to come and make a replacement of that because it's not possible. You can come and you can share and you can teach and you can help them to become the best that they can be. But nobody's asking you to just come in and replace the, your, the children dad. No matter how bad he was, you cannot replace their children dad. You can become a better man in their life. Okay? Or their father. Because dad's so many. My husband is an amazing dad to my kids. The father thing versus the dad thing. Right? So what I am saying, ladies... Single moms, stop acting like if you need a man, you need a man to show you the way, you need a man to open up heaven for you, you need a man, no, and a man don't need you. One of the things then also that I want to clear is that you believe that just because you can spread your legs and have babies, that that means that that is what you bring to the table. That does not mean that you can bring that to the table. If that's what it is, guess what? A man with a lot of money, he can get anything he wants. He can have as many women give birth for him as he wants. If that's the case, that's not what you bring to the table. You need to stop saying, oh, well, I bring, I have an education. I have a PhD and a PPP and an IPP and all that kind of stuff. And then I can have babies. Really? That's what you bring to the table? <gasps> that is poor because the education is for you. I agree with that with Kevin Samuels. Not that you don't need an education. I agree. Hold on. <coughs> I agree that the man don't need your education. You need that education. You need that backup plan. Just in case something goes wrong, you can take care of yourself. And when I'm talking about something goes wrong, do you know that this man is going to get sick at some point? Do you know that this man is going to die at some point? Do you know that this man is going to cheat on you at some point? You don't know that. You cannot go into a relationship thinking it's going to be perfect. It's going to happen. And some people say, well, you don't know what's going to happen in the relationship. I know it happened to me. I got cheated on. So when someone says that if somebody cheated on me, I will not stay in that relationship. I can say that because I did it. I did not stay. And a lot of you religious women, okay, I consider myself a Christian. I consider myself a woman who believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you that. And I believe in forgiveness. But forgiveness doesn't mean stupidity. Forgiveness doesn't mean you got to put up with all of that crap, okay? When you forgive... If that man, you forgive, like there are stories, I'm not going to mention it because she have enough already. I'm not going to mention it. But there are so much stories going on of Christian women that their men have cheated on them and they decide, I'm going to forgive him. And then I'm going to forgive him. How many times can you forgive the same fool for doing the same thing to you? It is called disrespectful. He don't have respect for God and he don't have respect for you. And he's using religion as an excuse to step on you, to stample on you, to spit on you, to accumulate you. This is not acceptable. And I know a lot of you are afraid of becoming single moms. Because that woman that that man is cheating on, is cheating on with all other women. She needs to be a single mom. And you will be fine, mamacita. You will be fine. You got this. And by what I know, you actually have some kind of education. Okay? I know it is, it is scary to be a single mom for some of you. I know. And I'm not telling you that it's easy. But do you prefer to get beat up, to get humiliated, to get cheated on, to get spit on, to get disrespected, just to stay in a marriage? Really? 
That's what you prefer? You prefer for everybody to believe, oh my goodness, I'm in a marriage, my husband, my husband, when you don't even have a husband, he's invisible. I know of stories right now of women living in the same house with their husband and they are in the same bed and they sleep in separate just because of what other people may say. My mom and dad are divorced. Can, uh, can you please give me encouragement or motivation? I will give you that after I finish talking about this. I have a very bad memory. So once I finish with that part, I will give you that motivation. But I want to finish my thought process. So let me write it down. I am going to write um, that I, Vinod, need motivation for mom and dad divorce. How old are you, Vinod? dad divorce so before i need to know how old are you and then i can talk more about it okay so um while i'm talking just let me know how old are you so that i can actually address that a little bit more so um one of the things then that i also want you to um understand is that i have a husband i do have a husband now although i, I speak to single moms i have a husband now and my husband is amazing, okay? Very much amazing. You know why? Because I am amazing. My husband is respectful because I am respectful. My husband is a giver because I'm a giver. My husband is everything that I'm willing to give to him. My husband doesn't put up with BS and I don't put up with BS. My husband is sweet and gentle and strong and powerful. And I am all of that too. Okay? My husband, if we have to go to war, we can protect each other. He don't need to go on my back and hold the rifle and protect me. We can go back to back, just like in the military, how you see that the soldiers are back to back protecting from the enemy. We can do that together. Okay? So... That is what I am telling you. A man want to be able to be weak when he want to be weak and to be strong when he want to be strong. The same thing with a woman. It is okay to be weak when you want to be weak and strong when you want to be strong. But you people have this assumption that women are weak and men are strong. And men are strong or, or vice versa. It's a give and take. Men are not always strong. Men, men are sensitive and sweet and wonderful. But they can be strong and powerful and all of that too. But it's dependent on what you bring to the table. Okay? It's dependent on what you are willing to bring to the table. I, um, I have a, 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 an amazing husband. But before, what, one, once we're, one, when we got married, or as soon as we got married, I was used to getting things my way. I was used to, to fighting with men. Screaming at them, being disrespect. I was used to that. Let me tell you. But the first time that I had an argument with my husband, my husband told me, right? Because I scream at him. La, 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 la. I am black, Latina. And a lot of people like you people want to say that I am not black because I'm Latina. That is the stupidest conversation I have heard. And that is a topic for another time. But I am still black and I always want to be black. Okay? I speak Spanish. Okay, just like African people, they are black, but they are Africans. Okay, so that's a conversation for another time. We, we will pick up on that one. Okay, but I am black a Latina. Okay, and I do have a strong personality, but I can be sweet and loving and kind and all that with the right person, which is my husband. And my husband is tough. He looked like he's Russian or something. He looked like his family to Vladimir Putin. He can destroy anything. But he's also amazing. But let me tell you, don't cross him because he can destroy you too. So in our argument that we were having, now we were having, that I was having with him, I'm screaming at this guy just when we get married. And I'm like, la, 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 I'm screaming at him. And then when I'm screaming at him, he in a quiet mode, without hate, without anger, he looked at me and he said, please tell my wife that when she's ready, I'm ready to talk to her.
I love my wife very much, but the woman that I have in front of me is not my wife. Please tell my wife that I love her. I'm going to walk away now. Please just tell my wife that I want to talk to her. He walked away out of the room and I'm thinking, what just happened there? Why was I mad at him? Why did I scream at him? I am thinking about all of this stuff. I have no idea what just happened. Yes, I did. I was used to being disrespectful. I scream at my ex-husband. I disrespected my ex-husband. I call him all kind of names in the, in the dictionary. I humiliated him. I put him down. I did all of that stuff. That was abuse. And we went back and forth. My ex-husband did it to me too. So it was a uh, give it, dame que te doy. You throw it and I throw it. That is not how a relationship needs to be. The first time you disrespect that person, it is over. Because a marriage has to do with respect, with mutual agreement. It has to do with understanding. It has to do, and I'm going to tell you, that, that, that respect has to be on the top. Once you lose that respect, it, it's over. Respect. Respect, respect. If you are in a relationship and there is no respect, please don't get married. Don't get married. If there is no respect, don't get married. You can be in love with a person. You can think, oh my God, I love them so much and all of that. Don't marry if there's no respect. My husband have never disrespected me. I don't disrespect him. And if I have ever been on that spot of disrespecting him, he is man enough to tell me, uh-uh-uh, don't disrespect me. And he does it in a very nice way. He never scream at me. He never, never insult me. Nothing like that. And he don't allow me to do that to him too. So we both respect each other. So you have to understand, if you are in a relationship, single mom, and the man is disrespecting you, Exit. Exit immediately because that is not going to work out. Yes, Vinod. Must there must be respect for each other. There must be. And let me tell you that this is not something that I saw in my family. I didn't learn it from my family. I didn't learn it from my mom. I didn't learn it from my aunts. I didn't learn it from my sisters. That's not what I learned. I learned it in my relationship with my husband. Because I was raised by a single mom. And all I saw was a lot of big bickering between uh, my mom and her boyfriend, or my mom and this person, or my sister and this person. All of my sisters. All of them. I have five sisters. And even though one of them is dead, I have five sisters. She will always be alive for me. She will always be the five. There will always be five. I count five. Some people, somebody died in their family, they kind of eliminate them. She will never be eliminated. I have five sisters. And all of them argue with their husband. All of them have bickering with their husband. All of them. Okay? And I decided I don't want that. So I decided I was going to be a single mom. It was my choice to be a single mom. I decided that I didn't want that. I didn't want that what my mom showed me that she had. I didn't want my, what my sisters had. I didn't want none of that because I decided I don't want to have a relationship like that. But with my husband, I learned that you can have something different. Okay? And I'm not saying that he is the perfect man and, and this is going to last forever. I don't know. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know that. He might die tomorrow. He might cheat tomorrow. I might che we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know that. All I know is today. We respect each other today. And each and every day, we strive to respect each other. Tomorrow is a different story. One day at a time. That's how I take it. I learned that. Because we like to plan ahead. And let me tell you, I do believe in God. And God has bigger plans than we do. Okay? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know that I'm going to be with him forever. But I do know, I do know what I know now. I know that I have choices. I know that I have a big mouth. I know that I have a heart. I know that I have opinions. And I know that I have the ability to respect. I respect him. He respect me. So I encourage you, single mom, wherever you are, whatever situation you are in, please stop. Looking for man to fix your business. 
if they fix your business monetarily, if you think that they're going to come and save you, they will use you. Because just like they married you and they can put down money and take care of your kids, they will tell you what to do. And if they give you money and they say, sit down, you better sit the hell up. Sit down. Because they are paying for you to sit down. If your kids say, shut the heck up. If he tell your kids, they need to shut the heck up because they're paying for that. No one could tell my kids, just sit down, shut up. Because it was respect. My husband respected my kids. My kids respected my husband. I respected him and he respect me. So I am telling you, stop trying to find all these uncles and daddies for your kids because Oh, I need a man in my kid's life. Get a coach. Get a dad. Get people. Get mentors. Get people that are going to help you if you have a boy child or a girl child or whatever. Get people that are going to help you and reinforce your kids. Get that. And to when you, the right man come in your life, the right man is going to come. And he's going to join you. And you both are going to share authority of the family. But stop trying to look for a man to just fix your problem. You are the one who got into that issue. You are the one who got into that problem. And you might say, no, he divorced me. He cheated on me. Hey, stop the crap. He cheated on you because something happened. You first, at the beginning, you thought it was all romantic. He was controlling or oh, whatever. No, he, everybody, my ex-husband cheated on me <laughs> because... I did my part too. So stop trying to point and say, oh, he cheated on me. Oh, he did this. Oh, he abused me. Oh, he hit me. Oh, he did that. The reality is, is that before the man abused you, he was doing all romantic stuff. He was being attentive and he was sweet. And he said, I'm going to buy you this dress. I'm going to make, you know, let me give you an example. I went on a date with this guy. Okay. In San Antonio, Texas, there is a place called Bull Verde, right? Where all the rich people live, first of all. And this guy know that I was a single mom with my son. We, we got along really good. I liked him. He liked me. Okay? Thank you, Vinar. We like each other. We went on a date. It was really good. Okay? That date was really good. Guess what? We decided we were going to go on another date the next weekend. In the week, I got a box in the mail, FedEx, DHL. It was DHL. I got a box. It was a dress, very expensive dress. One dress that I myself could not afford that time. Even though I was working with computers, I could not afford that dress. I went to Ross. I got my dress. Put my dress on. He came pick me up and he was mad. He said, didn't I buy you, buy you a dress? I said, yes, you did. And then he said, why didn't you put on the dress that I bought you? I says, because I'm not for purchase. And he said, no, that was just a romantic thing to do. You should have wear it. I said, the only thing I should do and must do is die one of these days. But I don't have to do anything else. He did not like that because he thought it was very romantic. He said, you know, a lot of women would have found this romantic. I said, I'm not a lot of women. I'm different. Because just like the way you buy me a dress, Nick, tomorrow you buy me a panty and then you want to charge me for it. He told me, no, that you, you, you have the wrong thinking. Guess what? A few years later, I saw him at the mall with a woman. She had a ring on her fingers. And she was walking behind him. And he looked at me. And he tried to flirt with me. And he's talking to me so nicely, whatever. I didn't even know he was married. Until she came up behind him. Really like this. And she's like, hi. Like this. And then, after she did that, he told me, this is my wife. And I was like, hi. And she was so sweet and all that kind of stuff. And he told her, this is the woman that I wanted to marry, pointing at me and disrespecting her. He actually, oh, sorry. He disrespected her 
in front of me and you should see her. She was beautiful. She had a great body. She had everything. I thought the woman looked even better than me. But guess what? She did exactly what he said. And he was still looking at me to flirt with me in front of her. And I said, you know what? God is so good. He allowed me to see what I would have had if I married you. He said, with you, would have been different. I said, no, you are what you are. And ladies, I am telling you, it's possible. It's possible for you to marry a rich man and all of that kind of stuff, but it comes with consequences. Okay? And I'm not saying that all rich men are like that. There are some of them that are wonderful and their money is not their ego. Okay? Okay? But I'm telling you, you have to be careful. I had another guy that I dated because, yes, I dated a lot before I actually got married. I dated a lot. Okay? And... We went to dinner because I like, I, I used to live in New York, so I like fancy stuff. So we went to dinner, fancy restaurant, all of that kind of stuff. He take the menu away from me and he decide, I'm going to order for you. And I said, excuse me? I'm going to order for you. If the menu was in English and I speak English, so I have no understanding why this man want to order for me. He says, I'm going to order for you because I'm the man. I'm like, no, you're not. You are not going to order for me. I can order for myself. Okay? I can order for myself. But he thought that because he took me to a fancy restaurant, right? And I am a single mom that know I need him. And now because... I, I supposed to be lucky that he wants to be with me. You know, I'm lucky because I'm me. I'm lucky because I have God. I am lucky and I am blessed. So I want you to, ladies to understand because you are a single man, mom, 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 because you're a single mom, you don't have to put up with all of the BS. But you are going to put up with all of that BS because you don't have an education. You don't have a job. You're not taking care of your kids. You're not taking care of your business. And if you are in that situation already where you don't have any of the things that I mentioned, the whole point of me starting this whole message to single moms and all of that is to help people choose their path, is to help people understand what is it that they're going to do next. Because if you are not responsible for your children, if you don't take care of your business, you are going to be hoeing. You are going to be sleeping with men to put food on your table. You are going to be doing that and you're going to find it as an excuse to do it because you are going to say, in my situation, this is what I'm doing. No, you need to get a job. If you have to clean, you clean. If you have to cook, you cook. Whatever it is that you have to do, do it. I clean tables. I clean Toilets, I clean everything that I have to clean to take care of my kids when I didn't have a job. I did all kind of jobs so that I don't have to sleep around with people and so that I don't have to spread my legs and say, oh, I want to put food on the table for my kids. I did everything that I could. So when I met my husband, he did not come into my life thinking, oh my goodness, I have to take care of her kids. Oh my goodness, what a weight. No. He came in because he loved me and I love him. And he felt, oh, those kids are respectful. I want to join that family. I want to join that nest. And I share authority with them, with him. But not because he came and he thought he was going to come rescue me. I was not, I don't need to be rescued. God rescued me. God is the one that saved me. Not my husband. I don't save my husband. He don't save me. We want to be with each other. We enjoy each other's company. We love each other. We respect each other. We don't need each other. I need water. I need God. I don't even need my kids. We raise our children. We don't need them. We enjoy having them. We enjoy to be having children. We enjoy um, living with them. We enjoy that. We don't have to have them. We enjoy it. So as a single mom, once you understand 
All of these things are different. A need versus a want. You will start acting differently. When you start acting like, I need my children. No, you want your children. You want them to have a better life. You want them to live better than you. You want them to be better than you. You want that. You don't need them. They don't need you. Because if you die today, guess what? They will survive. They will move on. They will be strong. Okay? So, Vinod was saying, Vinod, you didn't tell me what, um, what your age was. But based on that, you're saying that your mom and dad got a divorce and you have to cope with that. The reality is, is that your mom and dad got a divorce. And I know for some people that's very hard. And I will be talking from my behind if I tell you, oh, this is how I, who, what my experience was. I don't know. But I can tell you, your mom and dad got a divorce. That is uh, between them. That have nothing to do with you. Okay. Their divorce is their issue. You don't know what happened there. You don't know what your mom did, what your dad did. Whatever happened, you need to love them both separately. Okay? It's not together. If your dad cheated on your mom, you still need to love your dad. If your mom cheated on your dad, you still need to love your, dad, your mom. Okay? Because it's separate. You can be mad at your mom. You can be mad at your dad. But they are still your mom and your dad. Okay, my God, he said, honor your mom and your dad. He didn't say honor them when they're good to you. He said, honor them. Okay, so it doesn't matter what they did. My dad was no good. Okay, he was no good. That was the reality. My mom was not the perfect mom and it's not the perfect mom. But God said, honor her. I don't have to get along with her. You don't have to get along with your parents, but you have to honor them. Okay. My mom is not perfect, but I try to be respectful. I try to do all that kind of stuff because I know I have to give account to God. That's the reality. I have to give account to God. So even if she deserve it or she doesn't deserve it, even if your dad deserve it or he doesn't deserve it, even if your mom deserve it or she doesn't deserve it, you need to be respectful to them. You can speak to your parents and tell them the truth without screaming at them or spitting on them or humiliating them. You can tell them the truth. Because parents are not perfect. They are wrong all the time. Okay? Wrong all the time. But you can speak the truth with respect. So, based that your mom and dad are divorced, love them. Respect them. Care for them. You know, let them know that that is their issue and you can help however you can. But don't, don't, um... You know, don't treat them differently. Remember, they're still your parents. Okay? You can say, if your dad cheated on your mom, Dad, I am very disappointed in you. I, I, I don't understand why you had to do that. You know, I still love you. And I really don't think that my mom should be with you, really. Why? Just because to make you happy? Your mom and dad know they have to get back together just to make you happy? That's not right. A lot of women and men sacrifice their relationship because they say, oh, because of their kids. When their kids are going to get married, they're going to go to school somewhere else. They're going to have their own family and then they are stuck in the relationship. That is not fair for them either. Okay? So be respectful. Be loving to them. Let them know that whatever you de they decide, you are with them. Because they're going to have to live with your decision. Whatever decision, if they decide we're going to come back together... Then let them be co come back together. And you respect that. If they decide they're going to separate, then you respect that. They're going to separate. Okay? But it's their decision. Whatever they choose, it's their decision. Your responsibility is to love them. One is your mom. One is your dad. Just love them. But let them know when they do something wrong. Okay? Be if your dad cheated on your mom, you're not going to be like, Oh, it's okay, Dad. My mom wasn't paying attention to you, blah, blah, blah. Screw that. You need to tell him you were wrong and I'm disappointed in you. And I do not want to be like you. Because that's the reality, okay? You want to stand your ground and let them know you did something really shitty, okay? That's the reality. And if your mom was the one who did it, then you tell your mom and you put her in her place too. But remember, you want to do it with respect. Because once that is lost, 
your kids going to do the same thing to you. Everything you do to your parents, your kids are going to come back and do it to you. So, back to the single moms again, just to finish this up. Single mom, stop trying to act like if you need somebody to come rescue you. The more kids you have, the less rescue you're going to get. Okay? If you have one kid, it's already difficult. You got two kids, it's difficult. You got five kids, it's more difficult. For somebody to come and say, oh, I'm going to be with this woman. This is the woman of my dream. There have to be something more than you spreading your leg and having sex with him, okay, and giving him babies. Finding a woman to give you babies, any man can find that. There's a lot of women out there that are trying to put out and they are willing to do that. That is easy. Finding a man with money, that is easy. What is difficult is finding a man to love you and respect you for who you are. Finding a man to love you and respect you and your children. That is the difficult part. And a man is not going to respect, respect you and love you if you don't respect yourself and love yourself. I respect my husband because he allowed me to respect him. If he have allowed me to disrespect him, we will be divorced right now. He stand this ground. He did not allow me to step on him. He did not disrespect me because you know that was also a problem. But he didn't allow me to disrespect him. So I am telling you again, respect yourself. Make sure that your kids are respecting you. Stop trying to think that when a man come into your life, then your kids are going to respect you. Too late. Too late. Fix it now. You need to fix it now. And all you ladies that are enamel with Kevin Samuels, you will pay for the consequences later as well. And you will understand what I am telling you. You want to find a man and he's supposed to be rich and he's going to be, you know, give you all of this. Well, be ready to be submissive. Be ready to, to, for him to do whatever he wants with you when he wants to. Be ready for that. And when he say, get up and cook me something. Get up and clean the house. Get up and do that. Get up and feed my friend. Get up and do, you need to do it. And if I'm there with him, I will tell you, you need to do it. And go get the, go do this, right? Because guess what? He's paying you to do that. He hired you to do that. That's why you went and looked for that rich, rich man. He can do that with you because he paid for you. You were up for purchase and he was the best bid. He put up the best bid for you. And now you got to give up whatever it is that he tells you. I want three babies. You got three babies. I want 10 babies. You give him 10 babies because he already put up the money for you. Okay. And some people, they call it cow and whatever is it that they give up purchase for you. Okay, you want that rich, rich, rich man? Then make sure that you are richly able to put up what he said that you need to put up. And that is the reality. Okay, so I am telling you, there is a difference between a need and a want. I don't need my husband. My husband don't need me. I don't need anybody. I want my children. I want my husband. I want a lot of things. The only thing I need is God and sometimes water if I want to survive. But that's what I really need. You don't need a man. You don't need a woman. You want to have a woman in your life. I enjoy the company with my husband so much because when I look at him, I desire him. I want to be with him. When he's away, he let me breathe. He goes away to his job and all that kind of stuff. He don't call me all day and say, what you doing? What's happening? Or whatever. That is so sick. Okay. He let me breathe. I let him breathe. He go fishing or he go with his friends. He has freedom to do whatever because we respect each other. When the trust is lost, there's no respect. Okay? That's what we have. Okay? And like I said, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I cannot tell you, he is going to be a faithful man forever. I'm going to be a faithful woman forever. I don't know that. I only know now. 
what is happening now. I only know what we're giving to each other right now. I can't speak for tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know if he's going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to be here tomorrow. We don't know that. But today is all that we have. Today is what matters. So I am going to close by telling you, make sure that God is in your life. Make sure that you are being thankful. Make sure giving, you are giving the best that you can with what you have. And stop looking at other people and trying to say, I wish I was married like that woman. I wish I had her husband. I wish I had her. Uh, forget it. You don't know what is going on in your life. You don't know. You don't know what the crap that she's putting up with in that marriage. You don't know. Okay? So enjoy what you have while you have it. And when the right one comes, you will know. Because he's going to treat you the right way. But in order for him to treat you the right way, you have to start treating yourself the right way. Okay? Anyway, that is it for now. I can talk forever. I can talk for hours. Okay? My husband knows that too. I can talk for a long time. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect right now. I'm going to try to post this video on my on my YouTube later. But for now, you guys be blessed. Don't forget, if you have any question, um, send me an email to info at singlemom.today or just DM me. Send me a private message.